This is going to be another two-for-one video. I'm going to cover multiple things. I'm going to show you some USB host updates. I'm going to break the inode index limits. Right there, you're seeing a custom splash screen using Hashi1, and I'll show you how to change that. And I'm going to show you how fonts are changed today, thanks to Dan, the man, 827, and Mad Monkey's latest official Hashi update, which will be in my court set update today. But right now... I have the font changed, I have the custom splash screen, but I also did a little preliminary test to break the inode index and I theorized how it could be done and it worked very well and without having to use FTP for a USB host it works extremely well. So I'm going to load a random NES game right now. And I have uh, the inode index for the user interface which allows me to have about 60 game folders within the SNES Classic main user interface directory and approximately 100 for the NES Classic. So right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to I already have this core open. I'm going to go to load content while this core is open. Start directory. And I made a nice little folder called inode free and we figured out there's around 90,000 indexes for the system. So right now I'm going to go in here and I have four sets of multiple systems here. I'm going to go to a full NES set right now. And you notice that these all have parentheses in the titles. I'm going to load a random game. How about crappy ass afterburner for NES. Load archive. Current core. And we're running it. With a FCUMM right now. I can do the same thing. Resume. Quick menu. Go to low content, start directory, and these are my 60 main folders right here. I'll go back again to iNode Free. It doesn't matter what you name the folder, that's just what I named it. Kind of an inside joke. Going back to NES, and I'll load another random game. How about uh, 1942? Load archive, current core, and we're good to go yet again. I'm going to go back to the main user interface and I'll show you an alternate way of doing this. And I'll do it with S SNES games. I installed RetroArch Clover as a game and I'm opening it up right now. I'm going to low core because I do not presently have a core loaded. And if you have mixed results with this, just do it. I did have a, a game for the system you want on the main user interface and do it that way because you already have the core loaded. But I'm going to do low core, click SNES 9X then I'm going to go to low content start directory inode free SNES full set now load fantastic act razor one of my favorite games load archive current core SNES 9X now I'm going to be doing an MSU 1 conversion of this because uh, Mad Monkey pointed out that this game just had the MSU 1 treatment so I definitely have to jump on that this is one of my favorite, favorite SNES games, so if you've never played Actraiser, you truly need to check this out. And lastly, I'm going to load a MAME 2003 game. And I'm doing it from the main user interface. We'll load uh, Dungeons & Dragons Shower Over Mystera, which is a CPS2 game, so you will... It does use the CPS2 uh, QSound BIOS. I'm just going to pull up RetroArch options. I already have MAME 2003 open. I'm going to go to Low Content, Start Directory, iNode Free, MAME 2003. And I have the entire set of MAME 2003 on here right now. All of them. A good uh, 8,000 games. And the nifty thing about having these all in the same directory along with the BIOS, you won't have to use the BIOS HMOD. And uh, the other nifty thing is you have what they call parent and child ROMs where the parent ROM would generally generally be the larger ROM and the child ROM is a dependency. If you try to load the child ROM by itself, it will not work. But in this case, for instance, if I load 1942, and I believe 1942 is the parent ROM, I can load these alternate ones which are smaller and it will pull up the necessary ROM files from 1942. So it pulls them all together and loads the proper files as long as they're in the same directory. Load Archive, Current Core, MAME 2003. So I'm good to go on this. 
And the last thing I'm going to show you for this little preliminary test video is I'm going to show you something that uh, people requested. How do you switch a PlayStation 1 disc, a multiple disc thing? It's quite easy. It takes like five seconds to do. So I'm going to open up a PlayStation 1 game. It doesn't matter if it's uh, a multi-disc or not. I'm just going to show you the option you need to use. So I'm going to load Diablo for PlayStation 1. And say I'm on disc 1 and it's asking me to switch to disc 2. All I have to do is just uh, do my RetroArch options. Quick menu. Disc control. And I go to disc image append. This will allow me to choose the second disc. That's as easy as it is uh, guys and gals. Now I'm going to switch over to the computer and show you how to change the splash screen and how to do the font changes. So switching over to the computer. Yeah, I have the the new official hashi I re, uh, I'll show you where I have it in my uh, directory basically I'm looking at today's update independencies and extras advanced users and it'll be this official 12117 and I extracted that to a working USB host folder of course I copied the dump folder for my kernel for the NES and the SNES they're right within the dump folders kernel image for NES classic Kernel SNES image for SNES Classic. So given that, I, I always do everything from scratch when I do my tests and just to make sure everything goes right. But I redid the test where I did the seriously don't you effing remember me where I had the stock kernel which is in the dump folder. Then I do the rest of the steps which would be D for dump kernel, U for unpack kernel, flash, you know F for flash kernel, then R for rebuild kernel, and then M for memboot. And you can look at the cheat sheets and see these steps again, but the acronym I use is, uh, seriously, don't you effing remember me. That's all easy to do. And, uh, of course, we have the three different ways of doing the HMOD installs. You can do, um, uh, through Hashi 2, you can install them in here. And then you can do this whole process. And I generally do, like, an uninstall and flash original kernel before I do that. But the other ways you can do it, or you would uh, basically do the entire process of the acronym and you go to the hashi main GUI official and I'm going to the root of this you go to the mod folder hashi transfer hmod and anything you copy within this folder will get transferred over and once you remove it from here it'll be removed but obviously if you've seen the last video I posted you can do everything from the flash drive now so again, that method, and I'm opening up the flash drive right now. And you have your lowercase hashi directory. Now I have a fonts folder, and anything I put in here is overmounted by the HMOD that Dandaman827 put together upon boot. And to change the splash screen, you simply have to have, and I'll open this with my paint program. And again, this is using the current official hashi update. You have, I would highly, highly recommend you do a 1280 by 720 ping file. You just have to copy it into the root of the hashi directory, rename it to boot period ping, and when you turn the system on, it'll boot up with this ping image in mind. But if you delete it, it'll revert back to the original Mad Monkey splash screen. Now, I boot it up with my comic stands. I'm going to delete these right now. I'm going into my uh, core update for today. And I put it in the regular dependencies and extras folder. In a fonts folder. And I'm just going to switch over to shadows and to light. So I'm going to extract that to shadows and to light. And I'm going to copy everything here. It's not anything that it doesn't need. It's not going to use. So it's not a big deal to me. I'm just copying it all over. I'm going into my fonts folder. Copying it right over. And he does have a readme with it. I revised it a little bit like I did with some of the readmes. I'm going into modules, install extra modules, just so I can see the readme here. It is under DTM font remount for Dan Demand font remount. It says this module will search 
media hashi fonts, which I did. I did a hashi fonts folder. And it'll search for any of these files and just automatically overmount them and use them. It's pretty sweet. But you can read the rest of that and see what each thing replaces. But I copied them right into the fonts folder for now. I have the boot ping here. And then uh, for my inode index test, generally you get, like I said, 60 folders that you can work with for the SNES Classic before you end up having errors. And approximately 100 for the NES Classic. But I just made an inode free folder. Then I just copied full sets over in tags, just like I did on my Android phone and PC, etc. And you go into my folders, I have the full NES, I have the full N64, I have the full Sega Master System, the full MAME. I just did it all down the road and I used the entire flash drive up with all this stuff. And you, you don't have to worry about parentheses or special characters if you do it this way. The main reason to use the user interface would be so you can get the pretty art and all that good stuff. Like so. All the good art and all that. So uh, get the official Hashi update. You can now change the splash screen. You can change the fonts. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask in the description. In the next update, I'm going to show you how to manually uninstall HMODs and a few other things. But uh, now you can run as many games as you want and not have to worry about desktop files if you want to go that route. I'll still be using the main user interface for like the 60 games that I really want to use, but... As far as folders, I'm just going to use the inode index break-in thing and just copy them directly over. Just like I said, games, inode free, that's what I did for my folder and I have them all copied over. I have 10,000 games right now and they're all working fine. So I hope you enjoyed the video and hope this helps you out.